Mike's Daily Podcast. F -f episode 1227, 1227. My name is Mike Matthews. Welcome to Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valleyton, Mont. Today, we hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster. Plus, we get to the interesting news segment called the Micropedia Insanica. Because it's an Insanica world out there. But we try to make Mike's Daily Podcast some, some sense of humor about it. And we hear from Mike's Daily Podcast. My beautiful singing voice, a singing voice that is full of woe. Yes, I seem to rhyme some kind of word at the beginning of every show that rhymes with the word show. Don't you know, but I have to tell you why I am so, so, so sad. And that's because in Podcast Ravel, Mike's Daily Podcast, there's a dog, a stray dog that's been living in a very large park Mike's near my house. Daily and everyone Podcast. that is privy to this, yeah. they have named the dog Pumpkin. And I've been hearing about Pumpkin for a while. Pumpkin is a pit bull. And I thought, oh, it looks probably like a pit You know, they, they describe this pit bull. And I haven't actually seen pictures of him yet. And I saw him yesterday. Yeah, he was alive. But he was down the hill from me. And I called out to him. You know, come with me, come I have food, I have water. And he just walked away. So I feel really bad. He somehow has lived over a month in this park. And here it's getting colder and colder. And I was with Basil. Basil didn't even see this dog. So it just it breaks my heart to see a dog that's, you know, not in a happy home and getting food daily and, and staying warm and it just it's sad so i hope the best for pumpkin and i'm going to do some research online today and see what i should do next time i run into a stray dog in the wilderness like that um i did my google security checkup today did you do yours mine popped up said you need to do your google security checkup and i'm like well i've got a million other things to do but all right okay i'll do this it didn't take any time they, I guess it could take as much time as you want to put into it. What the hell happened to the... Oh, look, it just walked in. Hi, Mike. It's Benita the Brodeo Queen. How y'all doing? It's a disgruntled fiddle player. Tell you what. What? 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 I'm very confused now. Yeah, you sound it, Mark. What's all this talk about Jill Stein doing a recount and Hillary Clinton helping her out? There is a recount going on in the wonderful state of Wisconsin and uh, Michigan, I believe, as well. And, you know, Jill Stein did really well in those states. Some say she took, uh, well, she did take uh, so many votes away from Hillary, votes that would have helped her beat Trump. But... She's doing a recount and Hillary is helping her. So that's an interesting thing. Uh, Trump said, well, then there should be a recount in California. He said, because there was a, millions of illegal votes in California. Look who else just walked in. California, which Hillary killed in California. There was no way he was going to win in California. But that's how it is. And... Trump is still tweeting for all you people that love his tweets. And now we're going to have a president that tweets like vicious tweets all the time and doesn't care. The thing is, is he doesn't care. And that kind of, kind of should could concern us all. Ah, exactly. Well, oh, this this character came in. Hello, Mike. I'm at the root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Brewmaster, does your root beer put me in a calm state if I drink it yeah go ahead have some alright while he gets his root beer and pours it thank you I'm going to tell you that this uh, argument over the popular votes okay I guess we can't it's weird isn't it 
I mean, we expected Hillary to win and Donald Trump to contest it and all that. Now it's completely flipped and reversed. It's this weird world. I don't know how you feel about living in this world. I kind of like to live in a world where people are happy with the outcome of elections and it's done. Like it has in the past two elections. Maybe not the one we had in 2000 where Nader took votes from Gore and now we have Jill Stein taking votes from Hillary. Which that really wasn't a story, was it? Up until uh, everybody was talking about Gary Johnson taking votes from Trump, but it that flipped too. Ugh. Recounts, popular votes. I'm getting a little bit like I'm gonna pass out. This is root beer isn't helping. Oh wow, they just kicked in. Woo. Okay. Um. I had to do a major paper search yesterday having to do with my divorce because my ex-wife is getting remarried and well there was a certain piece of paper that we were supposed to get from the mediator we used turns out I've done all this research yesterday we did so much research both my ex-wife and I turns out the mediator we used well she got out of the business (laughs) it doesn't look good And the company that hired her that I used was like this mediation website. They were totally fly by night. And we always had our suspicions after the fact, but now it's confirmed. And here's today's podcast picture. Which I'll tell you in a moment. I went to call the number that I used to have for the website. It's now one of these numbers that you call and you can win a free vacation answer these three simple questions are you over 21 would you go on a vacation with a romantic partner or with a family as if you couldn't have a family and have a romantic partner simultaneously i guess but the picture today and that's life i guess we learn from our mistakes right never Never go and pick a a mediator through the websites, I guess. Unless you can confirm it and confirm it again that they're a reputable website. Which I did. I had somebody confirm it for me, but I should have maybe gotten three confirmations. Gotten three. (sighs) Maybe gotten 500 sources saying that this is the right one. But I hate legal stuff. Ugh. Hey, so the podcast picture has to do with Podcastro Valley and the wonderful Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree that is now erected there in the Castro Village. I'm kind of on a Christmas tree uh, theme right now with the podcast picture. See that podcast picture now at mikesdailypodcast.com. And oh, remember this email, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com and email me. Because you can win in this contest called Mike's Yuletide Personalized MP3 for the Contest. Tell me what you love or what you hate about the show. And if we read it on Mike's Daily Podcast.com, you or Mike's Daily Podcast, the show, you will win a special personalized MP3 for the Yuletide greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. What's a Yuletide? I don't know. I think it's a thing. Is it a, is it like Festivus? The Christmas for the rest of us? I don't know. It's, it's a more research I need to do, but you can win that. If you send that to me, what you want, just to write, you know, there's a keyboard near you now, type on it, tap, 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 tap. And, and life goes on. I'm a little bit, I think I'm a little bit off today. Cause I had no lunch. I just powered right through lunch. I had to find this document. I had to go through, I have a file cabinet. I had to go through so many papers. Go back like 10 years. It was ridiculous. Ugh. So, the conservatives are complaining about Hillary and Jill Stein doing the recount, saying, oh, what are you doing? This country, the the same complaints they had about Al Gore when he was contesting. Um, Well, he was doing a recount in Florida. And this is like the same thing. Now we're doing a recount in Wisconsin and this is just freaking them out. So, 
and it, and uh, they're throwing words like unpatriotic and all that. And it's just shut up. What if Trump had lost? You would have been fine with it. Double standard. And finally, uh, if you'd like to help out the show through the Amazon link, if you're going to do any Christmas shopping, Yuletide shopping, go through that link at mikesdailypodcast.com, the Amazon link, and that helps us out, helps support us. Uh, there's also a PayPal link. If you use that, well, you'll get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. All the past podcast pictures and past interviews, too, are at mikesdailypodcast.com. Now the segment that we call The Micropedia Insanica. You're a rock star. Well, speaking of the ele- one more thing about the election, and that's the Electoral College. They're supposed to meet December 19th. Get your game, huh? A Republican elector from Texas says he is resigning his position. Instead of instead of casting his vote for Donald Trump, he's supposed to. That's his point. The whole electoral college thing is being put into question. Bernie Sanders has been talking about it too, and lots of millennials I know are just done with the electoral college. Well, this Republican elector called the electoral college quote corrupted from its original intent, and says his vote for the president elect would quote bring dishonor to God. His name is Art Cisneros. And he was considering in August the possibility of becoming a so-called faithless elector, meaning he would refuse to vote for Trump if the GOP candidate won the Lone Star State and its 38 electoral votes in November. Now, there was a similar person in Washington that said that they would not um, vote for Hillary. An elector. In a Saturday blog post on his website, so make sure to read his blog because apparently he has important blogs to post, just like me, uh, at MikeStillyPodcast.com. Cisnero said he had decided he was not comfortable defying his pledge to vote for his party's nominee, but neither could he cast his vote for Trump. Quote, since I can't in good conscience vote for Donald Trump and yet have sinfully made a pledge that I would, the best option I see at the time is to resign my position as an elector. This will allow the remaining body of electors to fill my vacancy when they convene on December 19th with someone that can vote for Trump. His decision followed a previous post in which he posed the question of whether it was acceptable for a Christian to vote for a man like Trump for president. Hmm... Yeah, I've been hearing that a lot lately. People, when they hear I work for a conservative talk station, I help p- produce some of the shows, but they're like, oh, they must love Trump there. And I'm like, aha. And they're like, why do you say like so much? And I said, because I like it. I do not see how Donald Trump is biblically qualified to serve in the office of the presidency, says Nero said. Of the hundreds of angry messages that I have received, not one has made a convincing case from scripture otherwise. If Trump is not qualified, and my role both morally and historically as an elected official is to vote my conscience, then I cannot and will not vote for Donald Trump for president. In the lengthy post, he explained his frustration with both progressives and conservatives approach to the electoral college and the failure to use the body in the way the founders intended, which the scenarios likened to parents acting in, quote, the best interest of their children, even if in some cases their children desire otherwise. And he also wrote this. In most homes, kids do not have the right to eat Skittles for dinner. It's not in their best interest. Ah, Skittles have come back around. I should have bought stock in Skittles. Donald Trump's son talked about Skittles during the campaign. The people will get their vote. They will get their Skittles for dinner. I will sleep well at night knowing I neither gave in to their demands nor caved to my convictions. I will also mourn the loss of our republic, he said. Meanwhile, a separate movement is openly lobbying for enough electors to refuse to vote for Trump. They call themselves the Hamilton electors, a nod to Alexander Hamilton's explanation of the Electoral College's job as to ensure, quote, the office of the president will never fall to the lot of any man who is not in an eminent degree endowed with the requisite qualifications. Alexander Hamilton, Alexander Hamilton, the group, so much I have not done, but just you wait, just you wait. The group spurred by Democratic electors hope to trigger the selection of another candidate through electors either changing their vote or abstaining from voting for Trump. 
That's wild. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcast Valley. That's insane. And that's the Michaelpedia in Sanica. Next show, we're going to bring you the wonderful Madame Ruta Vega. Oh, wow. So France has elected a populist leader, too. Defying the polls. Forget it, polls. You, you're, you are completely useless. Anytime I hear about a poll, I'm ignoring it. They didn't get Brexit right. They didn't get Trump right. They didn't get this French guy right. They didn't even predict Fidel Castro was going to die. Oh, I guess everybody knew that was going to happen. I guess that's going to happen for all of us. On that cheery note, make sure to eat your lunch. Make sure to not watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. What the hell happened to that show? It had so much promise. Joss Whedon behind it. You got the uh, Agent Coulson played by uh, uh, Clark Gregg and all that. And it just... Ugh! Got so bad. On that note, I like this note. I like being outside a cafe anyway. Located somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Enjoy the rest of your day. We shall chat soon. Enter in the contest! Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye!